What do you do with 350 million gallons of radioactive water and nowhere to put it? It's a problem the government of Japan had to deal with when it ran out of space to store treated wastewater at the decommissioned Fukushima nuclear plant. And they began releasing it into the Pacific Ocean in August. The decision to discharge water used to cool damaged reactors was approved by the United Nations nuclear watchdog last month. It's a release that follows months of debate and strong opposition from fishing interests who say this is very bad for business. China immediately banned imports of all Japanese seafood. And Japan's fishing industry took such a big hit that Prime Minister Kishida ate Fukushima sashimi in front of reporters to prove he wouldn't die. But besides eating octopus on camera, what do you do when one of the world's most powerful countries decides to ban your whole industry? Where do you go when someone isn't playing by the rules of the global economy? Well, that's where the World Trade Organization comes in. It's the referee of global trade, a forum to negotiate agreements and resolve disputes. And so one country bans your fish or your fabric or your farm equipment or your octopus. The other can file a complaint for a WTO panel to decide whether the ban violates the rules. WTO was formed in 1995. It's barely a millennial, but it's based on the 1948 General Agreement of Tariffs and Trade, or GATT. It now has 164 member countries representing 98% of world trade. Major decisions are reached by consensus. And WTO's resolutions are binding. WTO policies have reduced tariffs, they've opened up new markets, but critics argue that it has been too slow to adapt to the modern economy. And it's made inequality worse by favoring wealthy countries, something the United States loudly disagrees with. The World Trade Organization's been uh, very unfair to the United States for many, many years. Washington says the WTO's strict rules hurt US jobs and industry while letting China shield its massive domestic market from foreign competition. For the past seven years, the U.S. has been blocking appointments of new judges to the WTO appeals body. It's kind of like the Supreme Court of Trade. And without judges, WTO can't issue judgments, can't resolve disputes. Global trade surged to a record $32 trillion in 2022. With all the talk of protectionism and economic fracturing, China and U.S. trade are still inextricably linked. We need each other. And someone needs to set the rules. Someone needs to make sure countries follow them. World leaders, including the United States, have committed to reforming the WTO's broken dispute settlement system by 2024. But can they? Can they put aside their differences and come up with a system that works for everyone? Until that happens, you might not be eating any Japanese octopus in Beijing.